Hi everyone, I'm Chef Anthony here at Woodstone. We're gonna do a short video for you today to walk you through your initial startup procedure for your Mount Baker six foot wood fired oven as, as well as your daily operation procedures. Uh, first off, we're gonna talk about uh, the proper type of wood to use in your oven. Uh, so first here, we're gonna show you our, the wood that we use here in our test kitchen is apple wood. Uh, we know not everybody has apple wood available to them around the world. So the, the key to the type of wood to use is a hard, heavy wood. Most fruit woods fall into that category. Um, you just wanna make sure that it's a, a dense wood so that you're getting the proper amount of coaling and uh, heat usage out of the wood. And the second thing you wanna make sure about your wood, whoever's supplying it to you, make sure that it's been seasoned properly. Uh, 12 to 18 months is usually the proper amount of time for wood to be seasoned after it's been cut so that it burns properly. Uh, one way to check that is with this simple tool here. Uh, this is just a moisture meter. It has two little spikes on it that insert into the wood. So when your supply of wood arrives, you can take this little thing here, stick it into the wood, and it's gonna give you a reading. This here says 11. That means that this wood is, um, has been dried to 11% moisture content. That's really where we wanna be with wood. We don't wanna to be too much over that. 15% is kind of the threshold. If you're getting up into 20% moisture content, the wood's too wet to burn efficiently in the oven. So really that kind of 12 to 15% is ideal. In addition to the moisture content, you wanna have a decent variety of size wood. Um, if you look down in this bin here, you'll see um, I've got a few different sizes cut. So I have these smaller kindling-like pieces. These are great for getting the fire started earlier in the day, as well as for um, quick access to flame during production. And then I've got some of these like larger pieces here. They're, they're between two and five inches in diameter, but these are gonna help keep you, maintain heat in the oven throughout the day, maybe when you're not, when you don't have full production going on. Uh, the first thing we're gonna show you here is the initial startup procedure. So this is uh, your oven has, for the very first time it's been fired up. Uh, we're assuming it's been properly installed and your ventilation is all hooked up and turned on. And the first thing we wanna do is slowly heat the oven. All of our ovens that leave our factory are cured in house, but there's been a little bit of time between the time the oven's been manufactured and arrived on your, your kitchen site. It's possible the oven has absorbed a little bit of moisture during that time. So before we really fire this thing up for cooking purposes, we wanna slowly heat the oven to push out some of that moisture that may have uh, absorbed into the insulation and ceramic. The first thing I'm gonna do here is take some of these smaller pieces. These are more of the kindling size pieces. You wanna have about five to seven pounds of this. And what I'm showing you here is roughly that amount of weight. This is about five pounds of wood right here you are gonna to want to uh, pick which side of the oven that you wanna build your fire in. For today, I'm gonna to use the right, or sorry, the left-hand side of the oven. And I'm gonna just start with a small pile and you can use your oven tools to get it back into the oven. Uh, one important note here is we don't wanna build the, the fire out towards the doorway. We don't ever wanna have flames coming up through the ventilation out of the doorway. Anytime you're building a fire in the oven, always make sure that you have it tucked far enough back into the oven that you're gonna prevent any kind of flames from coming out of the doorway. So I'm just gonna uh, put a couple of those smaller pieces of wood back there. Um, I, we recommend these uh, fire starters, this little paraffin wax, you strike it like a match, uh, it lights right away, it stays lit for five, seven minutes, something like that. It's a really good way, easy way to get your fire started every day. You don't have to worry about if, it's go if it goes out or doesn't stay lit. So you just strike this like a match. Just like that. Just gonna go with one for now. I let it hang out in the doorway here just for a minute to get it to get it going so that it doesn't go out. And once the flame is established there, I just use again my oven tool and I'm gonna to tuck it right back here under the crossed logs that I set in there. I'm just gonna give it a minute or two once those logs have caught, I'm gonna add the remainder of my initial five pounds here. 
and we're gonna burn that down. This is all you really need to start the oven initially. The front of your oven has a temperature indicator down here. Uh, it's gonna read LO, that's low. Any temperature reading under 100 degrees Fahrenheit is gonna read LO. So it won't actually show a number until the floor reaches 100 degrees minimum. Uh, the first four hours or so, we want the oven to slowly come up to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This little pile here will help get us there. We'll add one log at a time for those next four hours until we bring the oven up to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the oven temperature reaches about three to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, increase the oven temperature by increasing the size and amount of wood being used. Uh, based on what is al already burning, gradually increase the amount of wood per hour. Eventually, you'll get your oven to about 500 to 550 degrees. Once you've established this temperature in the oven, you're good to go to, to bring it up to a higher temperature or to cook in it um, whenever you're ready for that. So we've got our initial fire going here for our initial heat up procedure. Uh, earlier I mentioned you wanna build your fire on the right or left, left hand side. I just wanted to explain real quick why that's important. The red number down on the bottom of your oven that indicates temperature in the oven uh, is reading from a thermal couple that is located, just wanna use this tool here, roughly in the center of the oven towards the back, kinda of right where the end of this tool is. It's a little hard to see because it's dark in there right now. but. If you were to build your fire directly on that thermal couple, you're gonna get a false reading of temperature down below. Uh, so it might read very, very hot uh, if you have a, a hot coal bed right over that thermal couple. So you always wanna build the fire right or left hand side so that you get the most accurate reading out of the thermal couple. So now we're gonna talk about your daily startup. This is after your initial startup, your every day when you come to the oven, how you're gonna start the oven and maintain temperature inside the chamber. Uh, we assume that if the oven has been shut down properly the night before, that you're gonna have night doors on the oven when you walk up to it. So the first thing you're gonna do is remove these night doors. It's a good idea to find a good place to store these in your kitchen that stay out of the way and can remember where they are every day. Um, you're probably gonna have a coal bed in the chamber from the night before. It's not uncommon to see some live embers in there, maybe buried down in the ash. So just be aware of that. We're not taking this ash pile out and throwing it into a garbage can at all. We want to have a safe way to dispose of these hot embers. With your tool set, you should have one of these particle shovels, just a, just a shovel for, for removing the ash from the oven. That's its main use. Um, what I'm gonna do in here, I'm gonna clean out the ash from the night before, and then we're gonna build our new fire for the start of the day. Just gonna take these embers here, grab them with this shovel. As you can see, I still do have some embers from the night before. We recommend a uh, non-combustible, uh, you know, metal bin to dispose of your em your embers. We do build a uh, we build a ash dolly that we use here in the kitchen. But if you don't have that, we recommend a um, some sort of a garbage with a tight fitting lid. You wanna store it somewhere on a non-combustible floor. You don't wanna put it on a wood floor or anything like that. So you wanna keep it away from the combustibles and off of a combustible floor. If you're, if you're going right in to start another fire, um, it's not all that important that the oven is spotless, but you wanna get a majority of the ash out from the night before, so you don't have too much buildup in there. I'm gonna put my lid on the ash dolly to snuff out any remaining embers that might be in there. <clears throat> and then from here, we're gonna build our fire for the start of the day. Um, if you've used the oven the night before, you should be starting at a fairly warm oven. Um, it'll depend on your usage, but it might be anywhere between 200 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit to start. So think about you know how much wood you're gonna use, need to get to your cooking temperature. Most of our ovens require about a two hour heat up time. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to 
heat the oven up for a lunch service at 11 o'clock, you don't want to be starting the oven at 10.45. You want to be getting the fire going early in the day, 8 o'clock at the very latest, maybe 9. So startup procedure here, um, if you watched our segment earlier on the initial startup, it's very much the same. We're going to start with some smaller pieces. That's why it's always good to have that variety of size logs around in your wood bin. And again, about five pounds to start the day. It's a good amount of wood to get that uh, coal bed established. And then from there, we're, gonna, we're just going to maintain that fire until we reach the desired temperature in the oven. And again, we're using our paraffin wax fire starters here. It's uh, just a really easy way to start the oven every day. One note on starting fires and maintaining fires, we never want to use any kind of accelerant in the oven. We don't, we're not going to use gasoline or lighter fluid or anything like that. This is really the extent of, of what we would use in that regard. Um, things like that, of course, can be dangerous for the amount of flame they emit. Certain chemicals can also be damaging to the ceramic, so we want to avoid anything like that. So again, once my fire starter is lit here, push it to the back of the oven. Along those lines of no chemicals in the oven, we also don't ever want to throw any kind of liquids in here. We're not throwing water to douse the flames at the end of the night. Um, if, you need to, if you need to let the fire burn out, the best way to do so is to put your night doors on. That'll snuff out any remaining flame. Um, but we definitely do not want to put pour or spray any water inside the chamber. That can certainly damage the ceramic. Um, that we would have some issues with that. So we want to avoid any, anything in that regard. All right, so we built our initial fire earlier this morning. Uh, as we're moving closer to our production period, we should have a fire that looks something like this. We've got nice open flame. The initial logs have burnt down. We're starting to establish a coal bed. All that's gonna help maintain balance in the oven, and it's gonna help us get to our desired cooking temperature. This fire right here will help maintain about a, an oven somewhere between five and 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, you're gonna determine what temperature you wanna cook at. You may wanna go hotter. You may wanna go a little cooler. In general though, if you're trying to land the oven between that five and 600 degree mark, a fire like this will do that. And then from here, as, that, as those logs break down, I'm gonna take my, again, two to five inch logs, something about this size. I'm gonna be adding one to two of these, kind of as needed, I would say every half hour to an hour. And it really depends on, again, on the temperature that you're trying to maintain. But um, the point is you're not throwing in a bunch of wood at one time. You're not building this big roaring fire. The goal here is just to kind of maintain that fire throughout production. So as we're maintaining the, the fire here, we will notice that at a certain point that our temperature readout will start to increase. It'll land kind of in the temperature that we want to cook the oven at or to cook, cook food at. Um, keep in mind though that a, a temperature indication on the floor does not necessarily mean that the oven is ready to cook. The important thing here is this visual, the balance of the top flame and the coal bed working together. You want a balanced chamber and that's what we're establishing here with this open fire. So next we're going to talk a little bit about cleaning in the oven. Uh, the first thing you'll notice here along the back uh, part of the dome is a pretty thick carbon buildup. That's not uncommon to see that during the initial firing of the oven when the oven's still a little bit cold. We will expect as the oven gets hotter and hotter that that will start to burn off. This oven here, we just lit this fire. So again, we're seeing that carbon build up because the uh, dome is not up to temp yet and it should burn off as the oven increases in temperature. In addition to that, we wanna make sure our floor is nice and clean before we cook on it. During the initial firing process, you know, you're gonna get ash in various parts of the floor. There might be some embers popping out from the fire. And before we cook, we wanna just brush all of that back into the fire. So you've got a uh, part of, on your brush set here, or your, sorry, your tool set, you have some cleaning tools, one of which is this brush that you see right here. And this is sort of like a big broom for the oven. Um, I'm just sweeping up all that ash and pushing it right into the, into the wood fire. And that is, a great way to maintain that. Now that's gonna get all the little loose particles off the floor. If you have any extensive buildup, maybe from the night before, there was some cheese buildup or grease buildup, things like that, um, you can get in here with some of these other tools to get some more aggressive cleaning. So if there were a spot of cheese, for example, here, I could use this peel to get in there, scrape that up, loosen anything that might be stuck to the floor, 
and then I can take one of the uh, more firm bristle brushes. These are brass bristle brushes. And this is kind of like a big toothbrush for the oven here. It's gonna provide some more aggressive cleaning for the floor to really get it nice and clean and ready to cook on. So I would go through all those areas. This is a fairly clean floor right now, so we're not seeing much debris come up. And then again, I would, I would get back in there with my soft, my natural fiber brush. This procedure that you're seeing here is something that should be done certainly in the morning before you start cooking. It can also be done towards the end of the night before you close down. Great way to, to manage uh, just keeping the oven clean and maintained. And the last thing I'm going to do here before I start cooking is I'm going to take a damp towel and mop the floor. This is going to help pick up any addition, additional particles. Um, I've just got a, a kitchen towel here that I just got wet. It's got a few drips in it. Um, I wrung it out just a little bit so it's not completely soaking. Um, earlier we talked about avoiding liquids in the oven. We don't want to be pouring or spraying anything, but a, a damp cloth is not going to damage anything. So it's fine to maintain. So what you see here is, is mopping the floor. It's picking up any of those additional particles. And it's going to get it nice and clean for us to land our first pizza of the day. You see all the debris that it picked up on that towel there. Now throughout the day, you're gonna to wanna to use, again, your, your brush to sweep the mopping. That can all be done as needed. If you, you know, if you get some ash on the floor, you just wanna make sure that you sweep that back into the pile before you cook on it. And um, that's pretty much it as it relates to cleaning. So we just finished cleaning the floor of the oven. We're gonna talk a little bit about maintaining the outside of the oven. This particular oven here has a factory powder coated finish. Your particular oven might have a different finish, might have a different facade on it. Use whatever cleaner that you use for that. Uh, it might be a degreaser or some sort of a surface cleaner and that's totally fine. The important note here is that we don't want to use any of that spray inside the oven. We want to avoid any of that on the ceramic here and inside the mouth of the oven. So again, just, uh, just like we talked about earlier with you know, uh, lighter fluid, things like that, we don't ever want to spray any chemicals inside the oven. Beyond that, use any, any sort of surface cleaner that you use to maintain that facade that you have for your oven. So next we're going to talk about your end of the night procedures. It's pretty simple. Uh, you've been building your fire all day, cooking food, all that good stuff. End of the night, we're just going to let that fire burn out to a, a smoldering coal bed like you see back there. We don't really want any open flame. You don't want a fresh log on there or anything like that. The ceramic is designed to hold on to heat, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to hang on to heat overnight. Um, and so once you, you are down to your coal bed there, you're going to take your night doors. All of our ovens come with these night doors here. And they just rest in the doorway. They're not airtight or anything like that, but you do have to kind of position them up and kind of rock them back a little bit. And then they just sit right there in the doorway like this. They're gonna keep any embers or anything like that from coming out of the oven. Uh, they're also gonna help keep heat inside the chamber of the oven overnight so that the next morning when you go to start your fire for the day, you're starting at a higher temperature in your oven. So now we're gonna talk about the Fire Deck 6045. And we're gonna go through the startup procedure, which is very similar to the oven that we just demoed, the Mount Baker six footer. The um, one difference here is the added element of a, a gas assist burner. So we're gonna show you how that plays in with the wood, the wood fire that you've got going on. Uh, the first difference here is that you do have an on off component that you'll have to turn on every morning for this initial heat up. First thing you do, assuming the oven's been installed properly, all your ventilation's on, all that good stuff, you're just gonna turn the on off button right here. Again, as I explained with the other oven, the top number here will read low, L-O, meaning the oven's cold. It's not up, it's not, has not reached 100 degrees yet. When the oven first arrives for your initial startup, the factory preset should say 100F. It, if it doesn't say that, just move these arrows up or down, whichever way you need to go to get to 100. 100 is the lowest it'll go, so it shouldn't go below that. Um, and as far as the infrared burner is concerned, that's all you need to know for the initial startup. We'll revisit, revisit that later when we bring the oven back up to temp. Up top here, 
I've got my wood ready to go, just like in the Mount Baker that we demonstrated earlier, uh, five to seven pounds of wood to get the oven started. Uh, this oven, I'm gonna build my, uh, my wood fire on the left-hand side. You can choose right or left-hand side, it really doesn't matter. For me, I'm used to the left-hand side. Again, this oven is a little shallower than the uh, oven that we demoed before, so you, you really wanna make sure to keep that fire kind of pushed back towards the back of the chamber. We don't want any of the flames licking out the front uh, or up into the ventilation. So I am going to take my peel, make sure that it gets pushed all the way to the back. Again, taking my fire starters here. Exact same procedure as in the other oven. At this point, the underfloor burner is on in the oven because the oven's cold and it's not over 100 degrees. The underfloor burner will be on until the floor reaches 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Then that underfloor burner will shut off. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment when we talk about how to set the underfloor burner. The set point for the underfloor burner at 100 degrees is only for the initial startup. Um, once we're up to temp and once we're cooking in the oven every day, we're gonna, we're gonna set the floor at the temperature that we wanna cook at and we're gonna leave it there. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. But um, just wanted to clarify that you don't need to take the IR down to 100 degrees every morning. This is just for the initial firing of the oven. So we're gonna get that fire going. It's gonna, that's about as much wood as I'm gonna add for the next uh, one to two hours. Again, we don't wanna bring the oven much above 350, 400 degrees for the first uh, four hours or so. One added feature of the 6045 here is this glass door. It's on a pulley system that raises up and down. Obviously for lighting the oven in operation, you would have that door up. Um, if you're walking away from the oven, it's totally fine to have that down. It does not affect temperature or airflow of the oven. It's, it's actually kind of open here. This is more of a heat shield to protect the cook in front of it. And if you're walking away from the oven, you got your wood fire. Um, it's also kind of a good habit to prevent any embers from kicking out of the oven. Uh, just kind of a good, good safety habit to get into. So uh, we've done our initial startup, our initial heat up here. Um, what you see now is, is we have brought the oven up to temperature. Um, we are maintaining this fire for now. And the next thing we want to show you is how to change the infrared burner underneath um, that's going to heat the floor and assist the wood fire inside the chamber. Next we're going to talk about the infrared burner. Um, the factory preset, I think we mentioned earlier, is at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to show you how to bring that up uh, to assist your wood fire. and that. Assist is the key word. The infrared burner is really just there to put heat back into the floor. You never want to drive the oven with just the underfloor burner. Your wood fire is your primary cooking so heat source, um, and that infrared burner is just designed to, to assist that wood fire. So 100 degrees, that's your set point. We want to take it up to our desired cooking temperature, and we can do so with these up and down arrows here. Uh, today we're going to go to 500. You can set this whatever temperature you want to cook at. That's the uh, you can set this wherever you'd like to go. So if you want to go hotter than 500, if you want to go to 550, 600, that's fine. I think this uh, will go quite a bit higher than that. I think it'll even go to 750 if you need to do a Neapolitan style pizza. Today I'm just going to go to 500 and you just have to hold this button in um, and bring that number up to 500. When we're setting this underfloor burner, we're basically setting this like a thermostat. It's uh, it's telling the thermocouple that as soon as the thermocouple registers a number below 500 that the underfloor burner should come on. So our, our temperature here is still low because we're heating the oven up for the day. Um, as soon as this reaches 500 or above, we're going to see our hearth heat light shut off. And that means that uh, our underfloor burner is off and it'll come back on if we dip below that temperature at some point during our production. So we just set our underfloor burner to our desired cooking temperature. Um, our, our fire inside the chamber is doing really nice. It's got nice open flame. We're establishing a coal bed. That coal bed is doing a lot of work to feed heat into the floor. 
And we also have to maintain that open flame to put heat into the dome and to also give us top heat to finish the tops of our pizzas and to get, give color to our food. So we want to do that by adding a log every 20, 30 minutes about this size is going to help us maintain our temperature of around 500 degrees. Now we set the underfloor burner to 500. That's going to be the assist for the wood fire that's going on inside the chamber. So if, we do, if we're doing a lot of cooking in here and we take heat out of the floor and we drop below 500 degrees, the infrared burner comes on to assist that wood fire. Uh, and key takeaway here though is that wood fire back there is your primary heat source and you should think of that as your, your primary cooking flame anytime you're doing production in the oven. So this oven here, the 6045 and the Mount Baker 6 operate very, very much the same way. Um, you do have the added gas component assist to the, to the fire deck here, but once you've established that set point for your underfloor burner, these ovens operate almost exactly the same. You're just maintaining that fire, adding your logs as needed to get to the temperature and maintain the temperature that you want. You just have in this oven, the added component of that assists if, you, if you're doing high production. Just like in the Mount Baker oven, cleaning in this oven is exactly the same. We're gonna get ash and debris going on in here and I just take my broom, I can sweep it towards the coal bed. Removal of ash is the exact same as in the Mount Baker. We're gonna remove our hot embers safely every night or every morning, put it in a, in a receptacle that is uh, uh, non-combustible and it's placed on a non-combustible surface and, and around non-combustible materials. Um, brushing, all those things are the same. You're gonna use the same tools. You should have a similar tool set. Uh, and then we're also gonna do the mopping just like we do uh, in the Mount Baker. Just, uh, just taking, taking that wet rag once again, wrapping it around the head of our brass bristle brush. Again, this is not a, uh, we're not pouring any water in, but we're just giving the floor a nice mop, picking up any remaining particles, dust, things like that giving us a nice clean floor to cook on. So all those components should be the same in both of these ovens. Uh, the one added feature that, that this fire deck has is this uh, pull down door that we talked about earlier and how to use that. Um, it does have a, a, some special cleaning instructions so we just wanna go through that real quick. Um, this being a tempered glass, we can use a glass cleaner on it. As we discussed earlier in the day, we don't want to spray anything inside the oven. We don't want to get anything on this ceramic. So I do just take a standard kitchen sheet pan and place it in the doorway here. That's going to protect the ceramic for us. And then I'm going to use a commercial grade uh, foaming glass cleaner. Um, spray it on, on the towel to, to, uh, to clean my, my door here. So first I can show you kind of cleaning the outside of it. Going through if you have any kind of buildup, things like that. This will be hot. Uh, especially after a day of production. So you want to be careful uh, to either let the oven cool or just be aware that it can be warm. For cleaning the underside, this whole thing pops up just like that. And you can leave it up there. And again, getting in there with your rag and wiping. Just like, just to, to wipe any debris that may have accumulated on the glass there. And then it pops right back down and we're good.